Vulcan, you must help me. The prince is dying. Well, I'm happy to see that my talents as a doctor are finally being recognized. There's no doubt an explosion would cure him of all his ills forever. But I was actually thinking about your connections with the Red Scribes. If you could speak to them, it would save me having the prince's death on my conscience. I wouldn't exactly call myself a friend of theirs. But yeah, I could always give it a try. So is the prince doing any better? He is still in a coma. He doesn't seem much better, no. I'm going to talk with the Red Scribes, Doctor. He might know of a cure. Thank you. Let's change the subject. I have a few questions I need to ask you. Elves are pretty rare. I haven't had the chance to talk to many. Can you tell me more about your people? We are born in the trees, eat only seeds, and we spend all the live long day singing. I get the feeling you're fucking with me. Perish the thought. Well, it's just that we aren't that different from you humans, despite what one hears. Our civilization is obviously a bit older, so we have had the time to learn from our mistakes. We don't really live in the same rhythm as you do. We move a little slower, and most of us are prone to having at least some respect for the past. This is the reason why we never destroy anything, that we prefer to build on top of things. I've heard that you are immortal. That joke has lived for 15 generations. I will never get tired of it. No, we're not immortal. We live long lives, though, much longer than you. We are resistant to poisons, rotten food, and toxic body odor, apparently. Unfortunately, these things do not make us immortal. Don't elves ever make war? That's an impression we like to give other people. The fact is, we do go to war, just never against each other. You must understand that, given our long lifetimes, battles are fairly futile. This may well be what has motivated the choices of our king concerning the Ice Lords. But we certainly know how to fight, and you'll see proof of that soon enough. So it's the prince who gives the orders. The word orders may not be the best one. We do not submit nor obey easily. Our kings are a reference, wise men who can point out the way. They tend to guide us rather than give us orders. But to answer your question, it is his father, the king, who is the leader of our people. Who is the elf in the healing house? Is he really your prince? He is Prince Arundel, the son of our king and heir to the elven crown. Therefore, yes, he is our king. How the hell did he end up here? Prince Arundel led a detachment of the elven army sent to harass the dead walkers. And when he reached Bastion, he fell into an ambush. I got wind of this trap, but by the time I arrived, it was too late. When I caught up to the prince, he was already wounded, and most of his soldiers were dead. Those who survived covered our retreat. To here? Yes. The route to Carolthas was too dangerous. I knew about this village and felt that it would be secure for at least a little while. As soon as he gets better, we shall leave for Carolthas. The remainder of the human and elven armies are gathering there. That is where the final stage of the war will be played out. You seem different from the other elves I've met. Where are you from? Really, I seem different. And yet I have such pointy ears. And if you really want to know, I actually come from one of the most ancient and noble houses that exists. I'm even linked to the royal family but I can assure you that I am sufficiently far down the line of succession to be in no danger of being crowned. And my reputation is no help either. As far as bad reputations go, every mercenary has got one, so we're used to it. Let's just say that I got into enough trouble to eventually be considered a traitor to my people. When I got involved in the war, I disagreed with decisions made by the king. He thought that this war, like so many others, would not last that the conquests won by the Ice Lords would melt away like all the human victories before them had. But I thought differently. Right from the start of hostilities, I began to 
requisitions, certain resources I felt necessary for those doing the fighting. More food, more weapons, better armor. When my people discovered what I'd done, I was declared an outlaw, and many saw me as a thief, which, in a manner of speaking, I guess I was. A bunch of cowards. If they had listened to you, we wouldn't be in this mess. I've been telling myself that for years. But I do understand their point of view. It is flawed, but not entirely thoughtless. They have had some time to prepare their forces and to learn the strengths and weaknesses of the Deadwalker army. This knowledge might allow us to turn the tide of the war, even if it does seem too little too late at this point. Do you know these swamps? I've been in this area long enough to have explored a fair amount of it, actually. The region is rather inhospitable, which I suppose is a good thing under the present circumstances. A good thing? You're out of your mind. These swamps are a labyrinth. The Deadwalker scouts will never be autonomous enough to find their way to the village by themselves. That means we should be fairly safe for the moment, at least until a general or an ice lord comes to town. Except that recently, there has been a change in these swamplands. And I must admit that I no longer feel safe at all. What do you mean? Something is affecting the swamplands, corrupting the vegetation and the animals. And I have no idea what it is. But anything that grows or lives here could become a threat. So I strongly recommend that you watch where you put your feet. Let's change the subject. I need your expertise. Will you come with me? Of course I will. Lead the way. Sybil, can I talk to you? Yes? I'd like to ask you a few questions. What do you want to know? I need your help. Come with me. If you want. Relmar, you got a minute? Yes. I need your expertise. Will you come with me? Of course I will. Lead the way. Tell me more about your order. Before the war, our main objective in Creed was to collect and save all kinds of knowledge. We had a presence everywhere on the continent, and had chapters in every major city. We studied and preserved all possible sources of knowledge there. We also dispensed information and care. Because even though we're not the greatest magicians, our knowledge let us come to the aid of the wounded and the sick. I could, of course, relate our history in detail for hours and hours, but I doubt that is really what interests you. With all the knowledge accumulated by your scribes, you must have learned something about the Ice Lord, surely. We do indeed know some of their secrets, and a good part of their history. Anything we could use to find them? We thought we'd found a chink in their powers that our ritual was supposed to let us exploit. But you saw the result. That's one way of putting it. That said, I'm beginning to wonder if we haven't involuntarily brought about the conditions for their end. I'm not following you. What you have within you could well turn out to be their doom. 
even if I don't have the faintest idea of how or why. And unfortunately, as long as we don't know more about it, we also have to fear that it might lead to our doom, too. Can I do something for you? No, thank you. I don't need anything for the moment. According to the villagers, there's a beast haunting the swamp, and it's attacked them several times. I have heard about it, yes. And although I don't have any concrete information about the creature, there are some things that corroborate what they say. Even though we aren't very good at magic, we still feel it. And since we came to the swamp, we have all felt a powerful source nearby. The problem is that the source seems distorted, corrupted, kind of like the one the Ice Lords use, only not the same. I hope for our sake you're right about that. Otherwise, we're really up shit creek. We are very certain of it. But this magic could very well have transformed one or more creatures in the swamp, making them more aggressive, bigger. Who knows? Something to frighten the villagers, in any case. So you're telling me the thing is magic and corrupted? Brilliant. Just what I needed. I need your help. I'll be going now. I might heard talk of a troubling event that happened during the meeting between the mercenary and the steward. Yeah, the short version is that I have a demon living inside of me. A demon? The knight has never heard of such a creature. Should he be worried? The thing inside of me allows me to control fire. Could be pretty useful against the dead walkers, huh? Evidently. But is there not a risk that this creature will devour the mercenary? A risk? Not yet. It needs me, and I have it under control. I have a few questions I need to ask you. You mentioned the Order of the Ember Knights. What is that? It is the order that a knight belongs to. They are the surviving warriors and honored soldiers of other orders that were lost during this war. Oh, so it's kind of the order of the orphan knights. This name does not sound well to his ears. Right, right. So you haven't always been an Ember Knight? No. He was first a defender of the Algander Islands. Then he was a Templar of the Order of Burgeons, and then a Brother of the Rock, and then a Summer Tracker. So all of those orders have been lost. That must have been hard. He has lost many valorous companions in battle, and his heart is heavy with scars. I'll bet. So what is the creed of the Ember Knights? The Knight has long searched for the answer. Now he knows it. To seek a glorious death and carry as many enemies as possible away with him. That's kind of... depressing. If you follow me, we should be able to find a chance for you to get your beautiful death. Just try not to commit suicide at the first available...